Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from B-Link. And recently they've actually been pumping these little SER machines out. But this one happens to be using one of my favorite little Ryzen chips, the 5625U. Now it's an upgrade from the 5600U, a little bit of a downgrade from the 5600H. But we kind of get the best of both worlds here. Got a higher clock on the base, higher clock on the boost, and really when it comes down to it with these mini PCs, as long as they have an unlocked BIOS, we could make this act just like a 5600H by upping that TDP. And luckily, with this B-Link, we do have the option to take this all the way up to 45 watts, but through my testing with the B-Link SER series, around 35 watts is really a nice sweet spot for thermals and performance when it comes to these chips. And I've always been a big fan of the SER line, Super small form factor, great performance, and when it comes to power consumption, I mean, you can tweak and tune this. You can have this pull as low as 15 watts in total from the wall, or up to around 53 watts in total. It really depends on how you have it set up. So inside of the box, you're going to get your VESA amount. This also supports a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit, comes with all the instructions you need and mounting hardware a 6-foot HDMI cable, and our 65-watt power supply. Now, recently, B-Link has been including these power supplies with a brick that plugs directly into the wall, so we don't have a brick kind of sitting on the floor. They do offer a few different RAM and storage options when it comes to these mini PCs. This one here happens to have 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 M.2 NVMe SSD. And as you can see, it's actually really easy to get in here to upgrade that RAM. If you get the 16 gigabyte model, it is in dual channel, and you definitely want that with these APUs. It's easy to upgrade the M.2, and we can always add a 2.5 inch drive to this mini PC. And another thing to note with these newer B-Link mini PCs, they have swapped over to name brand storage and RAM. We've got Crucial and Kingston in this one. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports. We've also got USB Type-C 3.2, so this will support video out and data in, plus a 3.5mm audio jack. Taking a look around back, I will admit they did downgrade the USB back here to USB 2.0, so we've got two ports here. We still have two full-size HDMI ports and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, plus, as you can see, we've got our power in, still using that barrel jack. So I've had a couple days to mess around with this one, and it is running Windows 11 right out of the box. It does have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and it's really snappy. I mean, I expected it to be with that 5625U. Great little Ryzen chip. We've got six cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.3. The way I see it, these little mini PCs do make a great desktop replacement if you're looking to save power and space. I mean, we're not taking much up at all here. I've got a 23-inch monitor. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, the SER is super tiny. You could basically put it anywhere, and it does come with a mount. So if you wanted to mount it on the back of the monitor, it's totally possible to do so. This thing is great for web browsing, document editing, video playback. We're going to be testing out some 4K video playback real quick, and then we'll jump into some gaming and emulation. We're also going to take a look at total system power consumption. And keep in mind, we're set at the stock TDP here. We can always go into the BIOS and up it a bit. It will give us a little bit more performance. But like I mentioned, 35 watts is really the sweet spot for these mini PCs. So I've just set it up for a 4K 60. I didn't realize that this was a 5K video, but yeah, these little chips do handle 4K video playback really well. Even the 4000 series did, so I expected the 5000 series to do just as well. On the initial load-in, I always get a couple drop frames, and this is really normal. If I would have let it buffer out for a little while longer, we wouldn't have got any drop frames. But by the end of this 4K 60 video, we only had nine in total, something you would never notice unless you had stats for nerds on like we do here. And remember, we can actually add up to three 4K displays out on this unit, those two HDMI ports in the rear, and USB Type-C up front. From what I've tested so far on these little chips, I can get really good performance out of two 4K 60fps streams or three 4K 30fps streams. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to do was just take a look at a few benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And the first one here is Geekbench 5. We've got a single core of 1,392, multi 6201. Now I'll tell you, at 35 watts, this isn't that far off from the 5600H, which is a higher end chip. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Wildlife. At the top, we've got this PC with that Ryzen 5 5625U, total score 6057. And as you can see, the bottom score here is from a 5600H mini PC. 
Total score there was 7,716, so it did beat it out, but keep in mind that 5600H does run at a higher TDP, so it can keep those clocks up for longer. And the final one here is 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score, 14,789. And I was really surprised to see that this almost matches the performance of the Ryzen 7 5800H. Given the form factor of this PC and the fact that we're working with integrated graphics, these scores really aren't that bad. But now it's time to move over to some gaming to see how this thing really performs. Alright, so here's Forza Horizon 5, and this has always worked really well on these lower end APUs. We're at low settings, 720p with no resolution scale on. We can get an average of around 74 FPS out of this. Not bad at all, but I did want to take the resolution up. So what I'm going to do here is go to 1080p. We're going to turn some resolution scale on, and I'm going to lock it at 60 just so we don't overrun that CPU. And just see if we can get a steady 60 out of it. And with the resolution scale, we're at balanced. We could go down one more to performance. And that's probably where it's going to be to get that super steady 60 out of it. I'm sure it would handle it like that. But at balanced, we still get a few dips here and there. Overall, not too bad. And to tell you the truth, I would play this no problem at all. If I didn't have that FPS counter on, I'd say that it was running really, really smooth. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, we're at 1080p medium settings. Not bad at all, and I've had really good luck with this game on these Ryzen APUs. So if you did want to play some of your favorite fighting games on this mini PC, like Street Fighter V, Injustice 2, and even Mortal Kombat 11 at low settings, it runs great. Was definitely hoping for a little more out of God of War, but here it is at 720p low. And uh, with this, you probably just want to lock it at 30 from the God of War settings itself, because we only got an average of 34 FPS. Moving over to GTA 5, at 1080p normal settings, we can get an average of 64 FPS with this, so turning V-Sync on will lock it at 60, and you can have a really great time with it. Or, if you want a little more out of it, drop that resolution down to 900p and get an average of around 73 out of it. And the final game we have here is Elden Ring 720p Low. We only got an average of 33 FPS out of this, was a little disappointed with the performance, and as you can see from Afterburner, we're pulling close to 42 watts out of this APU. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and the Ryzen 5 5625U does a really great job. Here's PS2 using PC SX2 1080p with the DirectX 11 back end. We've got Ratchet and Clank running at full speed. The easier to emulate stuff for PS2 can go up to 4K. Next on the list, we've got some Wii U. Here's Bayonetta 2, Vulcan back in, running great at 1080p. I also tested out Breath of the Wild, and that one runs fine at 1080p 30 FPS. It just won't handle 1080p 60, but you could drop it down to 720 and play it at 60 all day. Next on the list, we've got some PS3 emulation using RPCS3 and the Vulcan back in. So yeah, I mean, that 5625U really does a great job with PS3. With the harder to run stuff, you might need to do a couple little tweaks with the settings, but it will run most of these games at full speed, 720p. And the final one here for PS3 is Skate 3, and this does require a pretty powerful little CPU to get up and running at 60 FPS. Now if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that the temps on this thing are at 91 degrees Celsius, and the CPU clocks have dipped a bit, from around 4.1 on average down to 3.6, 3.7. So with something like this, you know, maxing out all 6 cores and 12 threads, it really does put a load on that CPU. But these are the highest temps that I saw out of this machine the whole time I was using it. Definitely seems a bit high, but we are working with a mobile chip and a very small form factor case. Taking a look at total system power consumption from the wall, and keep in mind the TDP on this is set at 35 watts. At idle, we're around 11 watts. Average gaming, around 43, and I just took everything from the emulation and the PC games that I tested and averaged it out. 
and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and the GPU was 54 watts. Not bad at all, and you could get this to pull a lot less power by lowering that TDP. If you're looking for a small form factor PC to save some space and maybe even save some power, then yeah, this is something I could recommend. But don't go into this thinking that you're going to run all of your favorite games at 4K. That's not what this little thing's about. But I mean, as you saw in this video, we can get some really good performance out of some games. Here's uh, MK11, 900p with a low medium mix, runs really well, but this is a very well optimized fighting game. Now, if you were just to go into this as your everyday PC for email checking, web browsing, you know, doing some document editing, some light photo and video editing, then yeah, you could definitely get by with something like this. And when it's time to play your favorite games, I mean, you will have to drop that resolution and settings down, but uh, it will work. And when it comes to emulation, it does a really good job. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this little thing, be it a different operating system, more games, or basically anything at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.